Okay, one of the next projects we're going to do is we have to remove this pole that the weld people installed because we have to put it in a different place or put it in better or something. I don't know. This is meant to hold the solar Wi-Fi stuff and also the solar array for the well pump and the controllers for the well pump and things like that. And it was very nice of them to go ahead and sink this while they were filling up a trench. However, uh, it's got to come back out because um, it requires uh, some cement and gravel base. And then we also want to pour a small pad around it. Now this video is dedicated to our acquaintances Jim and Jessica over at Green Dream Project. Go look at their videos. Jim and Jessica, I'll bet it's nice to see somebody else have to do digging on a YouTube video for a change besides you guys, huh? Um, we got our hole dug. Obviously, we got the pipe out. Hole dug. And uh, it's about four feet deep, which is about half the length of that pipe. We're going to put quite a bit of gravel down there. Uh, so it will drain water in case the uh, ground gets wet around it. And then this is the UL cable. Um, it's an underground shielded cable that runs from the wellhead over to here. Because uh, this is where the solar panels and controller and things like that will be. So, um, so we're doing that. But next step is to fill this with gravel. And then we have another machine to show you. Robert's got a wheelbarrow full of gravel. And <clears throat> speaking of wheelbarrow is it a barrel or a wheelbarrow barrow speaking of wheelbarrow the thieves took the handles but not the wheelbarrow they took the handles off the wheelbarrow but not the wheelbarrow you know who knows i guess they needed some gray plastic i guess anyway the thing we have to keep in mind when we're digging a hole and putting a stake in or you know cementing a found whether it be a foundation or a post or anything in this part of the country and in fact probably where you live too, if you get enough cold temperatures and moisture, is frost heave or ground heave uh, from frost during the winter. That occurs when moisture in the soil begins to expand because just like water in an ice tray expands into a hardened ice cube, same thing happens in the soil when it gets frozen. So what that does is it wreaks havoc on anything that's that's uh, supported by the soil or buried in the soil, particularly something like a, a pavement or a shallow foundation or something like that, that doesn't go at least down below the frost line. Most houses don't have a frost heave problem because their foundations go down below the frost line or there is enough heat escaping from the house during the winter time that it keeps, that it keeps the ground directly underneath the home from freezing and causing this heave. But out there where that post is gonna sit, uh, it does get pretty cold here. And the frost line is about five feet. And the issue is that we only have an eight foot post, okay? So if we send it down below the frost line, it's only gonna leave us three feet of post above the ground. And we can't do that because we need that post. So the trick is keeping moisture away from that footing so that there's nothing to freeze and cause the soil to expand. Thankfully here at Contentment we have a couple things going for us. Number one, it's a very dry valley. It gets like eight inches of moisture per year, you know, or something like that. So the ground stays pretty dry. So as long as you can keep moisture away from it, you don't have to worry about ground heave. The sand was damp when we dug it up. And uh, it's not because the sand here is normally damp. Actually, it's normally very dry. The reason it's damp is because we've spent the past few days dumping our gray water in and around that post so that when we dug, it would be easier to get out of the ground. They're getting it on. Some small, like, version of a monarch butterfly is flying around here. I guess they're on their annual migration or something. And they're mating. Yeah. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. <laughs> We have a lot of equipment. We haven't done anything with it yet. We have a lot of equipment I mean, accrued. We get this stuff on the cheap. I'm talking super cheap. We do. <clears throat> so let's show it to you. Okay, 
Okay, this is a Montgomery Ward cement mixer. Picked up for like 25 bucks. <laughs> and it works? And it works. Yep. Made sure of that before we bought it. It's beat up, it's rusty, but we're going to try it out today or on this project. And you know, the interesting thing about it is that even though this thing is old and beat up and probably 40, 50 years old, it is better built than the stuff, comparable stuff you can buy today. And uh, so, I mean, it, it runs. I mean, this thing has been sitting outside for who knows how long, probably all of its life, and uh, runs. So we're going to use it to mix some cement and uh, fill in that hole. Bet you've never heard of a solar powered cement mixer. Have you, Robert? No, I haven't heard of a lot of stuff, but that's okay. But you have now, because well, this cement mixer is going to be powered by Buzz. I hope you don't plan to move it off of where it is. No, I'm not moving it. Because it was heavy. It was heavy. Nope, it's staying right here. And we're going to power it with Buzz, the mobile solar generator, who is doing very well right now. We're just going to run a line straight over. And we are going to have solar powered cement mixing what do you think about that robber <laughs> okay so i guess since we're working out here next to this post it's probably time to show you this uh, we picked up another dynaho uh, to use as a parts vehicle for Dinah, who is Dinah's over here um, and uh, you know but in looking at this thing uh, this this is a I think oh probably a couple three years newer than this one and it's got some things going for it it doesn't have as much uh, damage you know use damage to it and wear and tear on it as Dinah does also cosmetically it's in better shape it just overall it just appears to have been better cared for uh, than dyna was and even though you know dyna's got a rebuilt engine in there i don't know if you can see that even though uh, dyna's engines you know fully rebuilt the owner who had this who sold it to us also threw in a brand new crated engine and when I say new, uh, this is not rebuilt. This is a brand new engine from like 1969, 1970, around the time they stopped making these engines. And it has been in mothballs, wrapped in Cosmoline and stuff like that, uh, at an army surplus warehouse forever. So look, we've got an extra radiator, an oil cooler, and we've got a brand new engine to throw in this if we want to. And I think the way to go may be uh, provided we've got everything we need here would be to just take that block and switch out all the components on this or perhaps take some from Dyna over here and get this one running uh, because this one appears to be in better shape uh, as I said in in several ways compared to Dyna so uh, one of these is going to become Dyna we don't know which but uh, we'll keep you posted on that and of course you'll be a part of that when we do it and as i said buzz is doing just great providing good electricity for us of course you'll want to watch those videos and how we built buzz but uh very happy with what's going on here we're the panels are tilted at about 58 degrees that's just shy of summer solace this angle um which is fine because the summer solace this as you know that height only lasts one day and the rest of the year it's lower than that the sun is so uh, this is a good angle for us probably see us through the summer and then we'll adjust again Over with the hose. What you think, Robert? I guess it was okay. It was fun <laughs> using that machine, but I didn't want to get all my good jeans. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we got the hole mostly filled. We're going to have to pour a small pad off to the side of this to hold 
uh, a large electrical box that'll house batteries and um, a charge controller and a PoE injector and things like that for our off-grid, I says off-grid Wi-Fi, I should say solar powered Wi-Fi. It's level, it's poured, and you know, the unfortunate thing is we use concrete. It's not very sustainable, but we had it and uh, it was designed for this purpose initially anyway. And I just thought with the winds we get out here and uh, the amount of surface area that these solar panels, you know, have when they catch the wind, I wanted to make sure that that pole didn't move bend or anything. So uh, an alternative method would be to fill this with pea gravel and pack it down really, really hard. Um, but again, with the winds we get, I don't know, it's not, not exactly a fence post. So anyway, what do you got to say, Robin? Uh, I guess we're finished. I don't know. Finished for the day. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>